guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Today we're going to open up some shards because why not? Why not? The real reason is because I don't have a, uh, a champion guy just ready yet. want to make sure I can play these champions in really every game mode and give my own honest opinion before I review them here on the channel. So hope you guys are having a great weekend or week depending on when you're watching this video. Right now, it's one of those weird times in the game for me where the weekends I play a lot less and where I think most people probably play a lot more on the weekends what about you like what what days of the week do you play the most raid shadow legends so i feel like i'm slacking right now i still have to even get my my clan boss attacks in so i kind of feel the pressure right now of like wow i have somewhere to go after i record this video after i put this upload and when am i going to get my clan boss i guess in the car right do you guys do that ever do you do, you, do, you do? where do you do your clan boss battles on the toilet or in the car those are your two options anyway guys let's go ahead and shut up and get to the actual opening here we have 40 ancients we have three voids and we have one sacred shard to open in today's video let's go ahead and just jump right into it here with the ancients we'll do these 10 at a time and then we'll end with the voids and the sacreds so i'm not even going to give a wish list just 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 give me some good stuff raid gods so far okay dark eighth one of the worst epics in the game mistress of hymns not familiar with mistress of hymns let's check her out so sacred order she is a support champion. Nice, big, cool, huge sword right there. She looks like... Okay, so I'm not a huge Game of Thrones fan. I actually gave up. I, I need to get back into it, right? But what is that chick's name in Game of Thrones? I know half of you guys are throwing something at your screen right now. It's like, what? But she has that huge sword. That's kind of how I, I feel like she, she looks like. Anyway, I'm a little chatty today. Sorry, guys. Uh, bolstering blow uh, attacks one enemy heals the ally with the lowest HP by 15% of the damage inflicted okay she's a support uh, attack based champion so far a2 song of triumph attacks one enemy faces a 15% continuous heal buff on all allies with or on the two allies excuse me with the lowest HP uh, for two turns if the attack is critical all right this better be a good one hymn of rebirth Revives two random allies with 50 HP and places a veil buff on them for one turn. Can be a five turn cooldown. So not too bad. I mean, it is a really nice, she is really the quintessential like support type champion, right? Uh, spirit affinity, uh, increased ally defense in all battles by 25%. So really not bad. I could see her being somewhat viable on uh, clan boss as well. Mistress of Hymns as kind of a support uh, unit. Pretty cool. We'll go ahead and take a look at her. If I can remember, we'll take a look at her ratings as well. Uh, so we have Rain Beast. Meh. After the nerf, not so great, right? We have a Crimson uh, Crimson Helm. Already have one of him, but I forgot his ability. So let's take let's take a look at uh, at, at him. Crimson Helm is a Dark Elf. He is a defensive base champion. His attack damage scales on attack and defense. Attacks one enemy 30% place uh, chance, excuse me, of placing a 50% decrease attack debuff for one turn can be booked up to uh, 70%. Okay, not a bad A1. Attacks four times at random. Each hit has a 75% chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn. Places a block damage buff on this champion for one turn. Now, this is really cool for Fire Knights, right? For Fire Knight, having that Provoke is really good, and the block damage is uh, okay. It's good, obviously, and uh, attacks four times is also good. So I like his A2, and that can be booked down to three turns. Definitely a champion that does require a lot of books to, uh, to max out and get the full utility from. Places A, Ascended, places a Revive on Death buff and a 60% increase uh, defense buff on all allies for two turns damn crimson crimson helm interested to see and that can be booked down to a four turn cooldown with a two turn effect dude we gotta check out his ratings too that seems like a pretty cool kit i gotta admit a defense based on the damage too uh i'm liking crimson helm any of you guys have any of you guys have any of these champions as always let me know what you think of them. Let me know if you want to see me build these champions. Happy to build them up, max them out. If there's any you specifically want to see me do a review on. But so far, I'm pretty excited about Crimson Helm. Nothing here on this third kind of batch. And now we are full. We're not going to buy your power-ups. Player, stop it. Tell me what you think. Jesus, I've already rated the game. 
But first, guys, let's take a quick look at the ratings on the champions that we did pull. Starting with uh, Sacred Order, it was... Where is she? Okay, there it is. Mistress of Hymns. Uh, let's see. Base stats, 103. A lot of speed on her. And attack, defense, HP, pretty much just all decent. Middle of the road. Uh, but that, that's a lot of speed for an epic of 103. Not too bad at all. Uh, the ratings... 4.5 in campaign locations, 4.4 clan boss. That's kind of where we suspected she would be used as kind of a mid game, maybe to, to semi late game, a support champion in campaigns and uh, in clan boss as well. So that makes sense. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the other one here. Dark Elves, I think it, they are Crimson Helm right here. Did I call him a he? Clearly there's some... Uh, there's some female anatomy going on over here. She, she's a pretty hot one, I gotta say. Uh, I love the aesthetic of her. But anyway, let's take a look at the stats here. Look at that speed, so low at 85. And uh, the defense is really high at 1531. Definitely a support unit. Attack really low too, 727. The reviews say arena and campaign locations, really high scores for Crimson Helm here, guys. Arena makes sense with a revive on death. Uh, with the Veil as well. Clan Boss 4.3, Spider's Den 3.2, Ice Golem's pe uh, Peak 4.6, and Fire Knight 4.1. Am I missing something here that makes her not higher, a 4.6 or something in uh, Fire Knight? Again, uh, I felt I felt like her kit was actually pretty decent. Not, not OP, not S tier, but maybe A tier. I would give her maybe a, well, I, I don't know what I'd give her. I haven't tried her out yet. But anyway, guys, let me make room. Now I'll be right back to you guys with more openings. All right, we're back. Ten more ancients. Here we go. All right. Okay. Uh, Alika and Seeker. Man, if I didn't have Seeker, I'd be excited. I love Seeker. Seeker's still running in my arena team right now, uh, which I'll probably do a video on pretty soon. Uh, but let's take a look here at, I think I already actually have uh, Elika as well, but let's take a quick look at her kit here. A1 is gap shot, attacks one enemy, 30% chance of placing an extra hit. This hit is always critical, that can be buffed up to 50% chance. A2 is high value target, attacks one enemy and north 50% of the target's a, uh, defense if their max HP is higher than this champion's max HP. <laughs> So it's almost like you're incentivized to keep her HP as low as possible. That can be booked actually down to a two-turn cooldown, which isn't bad for an ignore defense ability, providing the HP is not too high on her. Attacks all enemies, 35% chance of increasing the cooldowns of all enemy skills by one turn. That can be buffed up to a, what, 50-60% uh, chance there. But look at how many, that can be booked down to a, a five-turn cooldown too, but look at how many books are necessary for her. That's insane. The passive revives this champion 75 HP when killed, only avail available when Sakara is on the same team. So not bad, not, it's a cool kit, but holy moly, look at these books. This is insane. Level 8, level 7, level 8. Wow, okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and start open the other uh, shards here. Three voids and one sacred. Uh, chances of a legendary are very slim. Let's proceed. I'm sitting here in 10 of my arena tokens, too. Uh, Doom Screech. Can't say I'm familiar with Doom Screech, but Arena, he has really good scores. Let's take a quick look at his kit, guys. A1 can be ascended. Attacks one enemy two times. 25% chance of placing a 50% decrease accuracy debuff for two turns. Scales on HP and attack. And A2 fills the turn meter of all allies by 30%. Places a 60% uh, increased defense buff on all allies for two turns. Okay, I love the turn meter manipulation by 30%. That's really solid. Can be booked down to a three-turn cooldown as well. That's really, really solid. And uh, only two levels of books, too, required to get it down there. And the increased defense is really good, especially for a defensive team inside the arena. Doom Screech is definitely a solid champion so far. We still have one skill to go. Uh, it's kind of like the reverse of Seeker. Seeker's ability, A2, fills the turn meter of all uh, uh, allies by 30%, places the uh, increased attack by 50% on all allies for two turns, and uh, yeah, and it grants the extra turn as well. On the A3 here, Shelter. 
This can be booked down to a five turn cooldown. Tax all enemies, places a shield buff equal to 30% max HP of this champion for two turns. Damage increases according to this champion's current HP, and all the damage scales on HP. Man, I really like Doom Screech for an arena champion. It's, 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 he's got a lot of versatility in his kit. Uh, and then a, a, a whatever aura. I like that. I like uh, Doom Screech a lot. Really cool champion. Any of you guys have Doom Screech? Any of you guys uh, built him up? Any of you guys use him? Let me know. Next up, we have Vanguard. Talked about Vanguard before, but he's just a mad champion. Next up is... We have... Renegade, we talked about Renegade before as well here on the channel. Spider's Den 4.2 is the highest rating. Otherwise, just fours. Really quickly looking at her kit, you can see attacks one enemy, has a heal reduction debuff percentage on the A1. On the A2, attacks random three times, 50% chance of placing a decreased speed, decreased accuracy. And then we have A3 is a sacrificial ritual. Decreases the cooldown of all of all ally skills by two turns. Does not affect this champion or other champions with this skill. This champion will receive damage equal to 30% of the max HP. It's kind of like, she's kind of like a poor man's Kaimar, kind of, right? Uh, and resist in all battles by 40. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy there. And the sacred to end the video, guys. Another no legendary video. It's okay. I'm not going to complain. Not going to complain. Got some cool epics. And we're going to end with another cool epic. And, well, you know what? Good old Gorgorab. We've uh, we've done it. We've, we've covered him on the channel here before. Arena champion. I already have him, so I'm not super excited about it. But he's a really has a really good arena support kit. 50% uh, chance of removing one random buff on an enemy on his A1. Fills the turn meter of all allies by 15%. Increase attack buff on all allies for two turns. And then we have the, that can be booked down to three turns. Not as cool as that other dude. I already forgot his name. Uh, revives all dead allies with 25 HP and heals all allies by 25%. That's his uh, anime is his, the ability that he's known for. And then increases speed in the arena by 23%. So he's a great arena champion, but not the best at anything that he does. Uh, so guys, that is going to conclude the video. I just wanted to put out something today. I will have a guide for you guys tomorrow, 100%. Uh, it's between right now... I really want to do one on Umbral Enchantress, and I have one already to, or I have like all the stats ready to go and what I want to talk about, but she's so niche that I'm afraid that not many of you will care too much about it, but I'm really excited to show or share her kit with you guys because it's really unique, really strong, and I feel like she's incredibly underrated, but she's difficult to get being an epic Void champion. Uh, so I think that's coming tomorrow, but I might throw a curveball and give something else. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, for more Raid Shadow Legends uh, content, make sure you go ahead and toss me a subscription, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys.